I can for say for a rainy day, but uh, if, if 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 Kelly has told us that yep we can we can we can handle it then then I'm I'm comfortable that uh, I think she said we, it with gritted teeth. Well, <laughs> I, I don't doubt that. <laughs> I don't doubt that for uh, no. for a minute. So okay, any other comments on the actual facilities assessment study? Well, I, I was just going to comment on on Lynn's observation that it, that you know he thinks that. The school board shouldn't have to fund the facility assessment study, and I, I think in a perfect world that's absolutely right. Um, you know, we're supposed to be using this money for ongoing upkeep of the schools and, and, and improvements and not just um, for uh, doing assessments. Um, however, given the fact that, that you were just at a meeting in which we were asking for how many million dollars for the commissioners, I think that maybe we should just go ahead and pay for this one ourselves. Thank, thank you, uh, Dr. Phillips. Mr. Shoemaker, do you have a comment? Yeah, just a couple. Lynn, if we were to go ahead and get the okay to do the facility assessment study, how much, how long would it take for that study to be completed before it would be completed? Yeah, and I. Oh, yeah, just like, an estimate. I'm, I'm saying I'd really like to have it done uh, by the summer. If, if at all possible, I, and it depends a little bit on how quickly we can bring somebody in to do the work, of course. But you know, I, I was told, and um, uh, like I say, when talking with uh, the Union County folks, that it took them. They said the actual grinding out of the study work was about six months, and there was two months after that of other work that they did before they finally presented it to their board. I'm not sure what all the other things were that the staff were doing, but uh, I would like to have the the basic work done by the consultant. Uh, by sometime this summer, if we could let them go, you know, first of February. So we wouldn't have it available to us for the budget cycle. Not all of it, no, no. And um, you know, and that again, I, I might talk to Bill, and he'll say, you know what, I'm, I've got a bunch of people sitting around just ready to go, or I talk to Todd, and he can say the same thing. I mean, all these fellows, everybody's looking for work in the industry. I'm sure we get some, some competitiveness and some very capable firms going after this work. So. I just think, well, bouncing on what Dr. Phillips says, what um, Lynn had said, if if we just delay this and we don't start working with the commissioners on a plan, and we don't have information, the bonds are a whole other thing, and we haven't even gotten there yet. Yeah. And that's I've avoided talking about those items because I have a lot of concerns about how we do that. But. This facility study, if we don't hurry up and put a mark on the map and figure out where we are then all we're going to do is conti continue to find ourselves dealing with roofs that are leaking, equipment that's failing, and mold and mildew issues galore. And we're not, we're not in any position to figure out how to prioritize. Part of this study helps us prioritize what we really need. Instead of having all these projects at 200,000 and figuring out which one's the zero project and which one's the one project and which one's the two, we won't be swagging it because Right now, your team walks into a school and spends, what, a day? Is that what y'all did in a few December? Hours. A few hours. Per school, a few hours. Literally. A few hours per school. Yes. And you made a list of stuff, literally stuff, through a, a quick walkthrough. And you didn't assess the equipment. You didn't really look at the make of the equipment. You just made some assessments, and you, and you threw a price tag on it, and you walked out. Now, now granted. We've got people that work on those day in and day out, right. and, and we're going in with that knowledge, knowing that that system isn't working properly and its life expectancy is less than desirable. So we, we, we have that kind of information at hand. But, you know, to go to uh, the chairman's point, uh, we don't know what the life expectancy is. We could look it up. We can get that information. Our, our staff are so limited, honestly. Uh, a good example was on, on the holidays. People take off. We're, we're struggling, you know, to get through those holidays with, with uh, limited staff. Mm -hmm. And when everybody comes back, not, the work orders <laughs> go right through the roof when everybody comes back because right. they've had a chance to kind of take, take a deep breath. They're coming back in the school and they're going, well, that light's out. I don't, you know, I don't like the way that door is closing. And suddenly you have a whole host of work orders. Not in common. I'm just saying that's what takes our everyday staff hours up. It's just fixing what needs to be fixed. 
We don't have people to sit down and plan this. The CIP that Dave is, nothing against your document, Dave, but, and I like it, because it does document all that in a very, uh, a way that's always the same for every school, and you can look through the document and see the comparisons and all. What it doesn't give you is the detail that this document does. And I'm not saying that it's rocket science, I'm not saying that at all, but it does take somebody I've done these. I, I know what it takes, and it just takes somebody to, to expend the time, to put the boots on the ground, to gather the information, and to say, okay, the assessment is this, and here's the solution. It takes writing that document. Right. That doesn't happen by Dave and, and me and a handful of people from our shop. It can't, it can't get done, unless you want us to only focus on that, and then we'll take a shot at it. But, but it would take that kind of dedication. It would take an investment of people solid for, you know, four to six months at least for us to do that kind of document. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shoemaker. Uh, Mr. Shoe, you had yes, a further I, comments? I got just a few more comments that I wanted to add, and that is, um, you know, each one of us own a home. And I've never had a survey of my home as far as what needs to be done or anything. I'd probably be surprised, you know, as you get older, things tend to sort of get be put on the back burner, that type thing. But... In an ideal world, which is what we're talking about here, you know, spending this type of money to get a document that we may not even get funding for is a real concern to me. I mean, if I look at my own home situation and they say, well, yeah, Mr. Shue, you're going to need a new roof and your, your heat and air system has gone out, you know, yeah, you're going to have to lay up about $20,000 to get this stuff straightened out. Well, that's why the school system is in a fix as it break type mode. And that's the way it's been between the fix and break type mode and build in schools. That's all we've got done for the last 15, 17 years, fix and break and build schools. But, you know, I take, you know, uh, every word you said, you know, Barry, about, you know, where you're at on this. And I know that you're big on getting this done, and I am too. But there's got to be a plan somewhere. And we can talk about it all day, but until we have a viable source, a viable way of, you know, paying for it, then it won't get done. As I mentioned earlier about the salary study, and then we did the uh, uh, the uh, the ORED the ORED study. We spent what forty three thousand dollars for the ORED study, and like I mentioned to you in, in my notes to you and copied to the superintendent and the uh, chair, I was personally I was disappointed in what we got. Because you guys did, had already gave most of that information to us already. We had that information. Matter of fact, we actually had a little bit more than they gave us already. But that wasn't but $43,000. We're talking a half million dollars here. I don't want to spend money, folks, that we desperately need to find out something that we basically already know. We know this because you've got these things. Sure, the things that we don't have, the life study, I mean, the life expectancy and the remainable, remaining use of a certain item, I know that's you can find that. And staff, obviously, is always a problem. You don't have enough to get done what you need to get done now, and I understand that. So, you know, we're in a really pretty tight dilemma here. I, I was thinking with uh, talking with Dr. Shepard just briefly, you know, asking him because, you know, when we did the one-time money, the one-time bond, uh, not bond money, but the one-time uh, monies that we had from our uh, savings and that type thing, if I'm not mistaken, I think there was maybe 200000 somewhere there about still left that we haven't spent of that. Now, is, Kelly, is that in a separate account or is that in our general fund right now? So it's, okay, so that's part of the general fund. That's part of whatever we have. That's part of it. Okay, all right. Well, I was thinking, of course, if it's already in the general fund, it's not going to matter because it's all one big pot anyway. But we haven't spent that money, and it was money that we had intended on spending. And I could see us using some of that money for items two, three, four, and 5, as Ms. Carpenter had suggested there. And uh, but on item one, though, I, I tell you, I, I'm a, I'm gonna be sort of hard pressed to hard convinced that you know that we we don't have that money. I mean, we do, but I'd rather see us using it on something else. 
the 200000 we was going to go ahead and spend anyway. We can divvy that up however we can to do these two, three, four, five, whatever we can get with that, and then find out if we're going to have a new source of money to us. And then I know, Dave, also you talked mentioned this before about multiple bond referendums, which is more than likely what it's going to take to get this done. And so if you're looking at that, we look at, as Mr. Kiger added to my earlier comments, if the commissioners say, yeah, we need a bond, and I think they'll go along with it. I really think that the commissioners, you may have one or two that says, no, I don't want to do it. But that's not really, all we need is three to say yes. And if those three says yes, then it will go before the voters. And the voters will have to say one way or the other. But you think about it now. May 2014, the bond would be passed if it passed. Then it would be the spring of 2015 before we get access to the money. Of course, in the meantime, we could be doing some of these things, particularly if we already had these assessments done. Right? Mm -hmm. All right, but by the time we get started on this, the assessments are done in 2014. We get the money in 2015, 2016, and then we have to do another bond because the, I mean, the cost for what we found out in this study has got to come from somewhere. So then you're looking at 16 for another bond, and then the 17 for the funds to come available, and so it just goes on and on. And that was the point that I was trying to make earlier. And none of that makes this go away. It's a it's a big problem. But I hope what I said made some sense to some of you anyway. But I'm trying to think ahead, trying to think down the road. I just don't want to see us pay for something that we're not going to be able to use for years to come, more than likely. And that's just my thoughts. I mean, if you can make it happen faster, that would be good. But I just personally don't see how that can happen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Shu. Um, you know, it really would be nice if it was done prior to we start making our request I mean the overlap there doesn't really help us any but that, that that's neither here nor there at this point um, we part, will part of that may just simply be the firm we choose too well okay because yeah. if there's you know if they can put four teams on the ground and, and uh, you know instead of doing it with a single team I mean a lot of that is all in play yet and I guess I don't um, <laughs> I, I was asked to join two company, two departments together and make them work. What I'm telling you, this is this is the business plan for these departments. Without it, we have no plan. We simply have a handful of paper that says we have a lot of needs. Nobody believes it. It's too thick to read through it. And in fact, it doesn't have the detail it should have to convince anybody it's what we need. We need the business plan, and that's all I can tell you. I, I, I've been at this a long time, and I can tell you that uh, without this, I don't care what kind of conversation we have with the county commissioners. I don't care what conversation we have with the taxpayers. There is not a belief behind it in terms of what we have to show them because we don't have the real detail, and that's the simple reality of this. And okay. Um, well, that... We, we, we delved in a little bit of two through five, but let's go back and re revisit those specifically. Um, so we, let's let's talk about those, and we will start with Mr. Walter. Are these action items for next week individually? Well, I think my opinion is that we would list each one separately on the action agenda. That, that would be my recommendation to the board. Okay. Again, I, what makes up the cost? Seventy-five thousand. It's it's based on forty plus years of doing this. Um, I can tell you that uh, it takes. First of all, we have no drawings. Mm -hmm. It takes somebody sitting down, pulling together what information we have, and going out and w literally doing existing conditions drawings enough to at least work at the, and develop a plan for us. In many cases, we have no survey. So I've been, I've, I've tried to incorporate, you know, what it would take to even get get to the point of starting a design process, and it, you know, I, I looked at about for the for the larger projects about twenty five thousand dollars in pure engineering just to get the utilities, the topo, the survey work, and and all the drawings pulled together. And we don't have any of that. Not for most of these. We have bits and pieces, but we mm -hmm. don't have it all. No. 
And unfortunately, a lot of the firms that did the work are no longer in existence. That's because okay. they're older, older schools. I yes. can see that. Yeah. yeah, I'm more apt to support doing a, these individual assessments to, to know exactly what we're going to be spending our money on mm -hmm. um, and a plan. It still seems like you know, just looking at it, it's kind of high, but you told me there's more to it than. Yeah, there, there really is in this case. If we had a set of documents and we'd say, you know, we, we'd like you to take a look at this, assess it, and, and tell us, uh, you know, what, what we can do with it, that's, that's one thing. But uh, even, and I, and I look at Central as being, I'm going to say, one of the more, not, not necessarily newer schools, but one of the, the ones that hasn't changed all that much. You know, it's had additions. And even there, we don't have a complete set of documents. Okay. So. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walter. Ms. Carpenter? Well, yeah, I basically heard my comments. Uh, the only one that I have a real concern, and I mentioned to you, and I, I'd really like you to check the Glenn Center to mm -hmm. see what documents oh. with the with them to see what possibly is 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 out there. I think there may be some really some some documents that we may not know about that like structure documents and things that may be possibly out there. Also, will you be discussing with the staff there to see what maybe, you know, as I mentioned, CAF, you know, like we did at Concord, the, mm -hmm. the, the, what they maybe would want, whether it be the cafeteria, the library, or, or a gym, you know, where we went to Northwest, you know, right. their big concern, they wanted their gym. Right. They didn't, you know, they didn't go for the cafeteria mm -hmm. where Concord wanted their cafeteria yes. you know what is their preference you know if we're they're going to go for a big thing you know the 1.5 million was northwest gym and you know they really could have used the cafeteria <laughs> yes. so you know yes. what is the school themselves wanting absolutely. um so will you be talking with staff mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. oh okay part of that initial work is going to be uh, i'm sure several meetings with staff to develop a program and a mission statement for you know where the school is going to be going in the future and one thing I didn't know if we ever did, I mean, I know we talk with staff. You know, the staff may, or the the school administration may have a different approach. Have we ever met or had a meeting with the PTAs there or the Parents Association? Because, you know, the, the staff may have a, a different approach than what the parents have. Mm -hmm. And I wondered if we ever did that when we're, doing something like this to say, okay, school, we're going to have a meeting and, and invite the PTA and the administration because, you know, it's the parents and the students that are there. And I wondered if we ever had a approach like this because, you know, that's what it's all about. And to me, I think, you know, if we're going to do this and it's going to be a bond, to me, this is the approach we ought to take because it's about the community, the students, and the facility. So, you know, that may be an approach we may want to take. Thank you, Ms. Carpenter. Mr. Schumacher? Well, on um, one of these, which is the Glenn Center, we know that the Cabarrus Education Foundation is putting together a team to do some research on what it would cost to renovate that building. And so I don't necessarily think that if they can get monies from another source, um, that we should have to invest $75,000, especially if they're going to be looking to other organizations. Pardon? Is that just the auditorium? That was uh, looking at the facility. And you, to me, you wouldn't bring a guy in to look just at the auditorium. You would look at the whole facility and, and do one piece of work and not smatterings of work but to, one of the things in our September meeting when we had this discussion on our agenda was what was the functional use of the building going to be and then whatever requirements facilities ma maintenance needed to have in that building whatever their build on that so we owed them two pieces of information so that they could go ahead and hire this consultant to help give them the cost for this renovation of this building with some historical perspective to it, not that they wanted to maintain the historical, they didn't want to go like like a historical home kind of thing. But So that's my concern about the $75,000 there. I don't want a, dupl a duplicated effort 
And if the Cabarrus Education Foundation is going to do this, then we should just be advisors to them and help them craft the do have craft, craft the document that that they need to provide to this person because they were putting together a team, from what I understand, to help them with this process. And they've okay. now got their director, so hopefully in the next month or two they'll be moving forward and, and begging us for information to help them do that. So on that on number four, I would want to kind of table that particular one for the future until we find out what Cabarrus Education Foundation is going to do. As far as the other two, other three, I don't have any problems with number two, number three, or number five. I know that when you look at what a facility's needs are and you don't have any as-builts, and that means as-builts from structurals, as-builts from mechanical and piping, as-builts from electricals, and you don't know where things terminate and, and begin and end, then, then you've got a lot of work you've got to do to recreate the structure to figure out how you, can you how can you do renovation to the structure and that's part that's what this money is involved with is kind of creating a an as built maybe not to a huge detail but at least yeah. giving you as built for all those all those support functions in that building and so yeah. it's a fair price based on where I've been and, and what we've done in it in, in my lifetime Thank you, Mr. Shoemaker. Mr. Shoe, do you have further, you know further comments on uh, two through five? Mr. Harrison. Uh, no, no further okay, Dr. Phillips. Well, I, first of all, I, I completely agree with Carolyn that if, if we want to have any hope of selling this bond to the public, we have to give them the details as to what we're going to do with the money. And without these studies, we can't do that. So I, I, I definitely am in favor of this. Now, as far as the Glenn Center, goes um, I I sit on the board as liaison for the the Cabarrus County Education Foundation they don't have seventy five thousand dollars right now so if if we were going to ask them to do this study I don't think that they could raise the money and get it done by the time the bond is going to be discussed in public so we have the money let's get it going and then we can ask the Cabarrus County Education Foundation to allocate their fundraising towards getting the rest of the project done because I think we're just going to try to get some basics I think is is the thought that will help with the maybe making things handicap accessible and, and utility upgrades and things like that and then as far as the actual renovation of the auditorium itself to make it performance ready that would be where we would ask the uh, outside groups to help raise money for that. Great. So I, yeah, that, it, you, know, you could, you may want to check with the new director and to see if yeah. that's that I've got, got, I don't have my sig signals crossed, and maybe they can contribute some to the seventy-five thousand, which of course would help. But I, 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 I know for a fact they wouldn't be able to give us all that money tomorrow. Okay, thank you, Dr. Phillips. Um, I don't have any further further comments. I think we've we've pretty much uh, uh, kicked it around enough. Is everybody okay if we have each one as an individual item? Okay, uh, Ms. I Ms. Monroe, that's what we will do for those items. So with that, we will move on to 4.04. Thank you, Dave and, and Lynn, thank you. Uh, for your time and, and, and patience in talking about that. And 4.04, .04, we will uh, ask a, our attorney, Mr. Mark Enriquez, to discuss our um, uh, memorandum of agreement with RCCC. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> We've uh, the Board of Education, along with the Kannapolis Board of Education and the Rowan um, Community College, have had for several years agreement regarding the operation of the early college. Um, what has come to our attention this year, we actually there has not been an agreement signed uh, for this year, and there were some discussions uh, between uh, our folks on our side and Rowan Community College regarding maintenance of mobile units. We had provided some mobile units. Actually, in 2010, we sold four mobile units to the county for a dollar each, um, which were then located over at the community college. Some of those mobile units are in need of repair, and there have been discussions back and forth about whose responsibility uh, that is to repair it. 
Um, what we are proposing after a meeting with Dr. Shepard is that we maintain the three units where we have students and that they maintain the unit where uh, the community college has students. So what I've done is taken the existing agreement um, that we had before and what you've got on your agenda is a red line version that makes two changes. One is to, uh, to incorporate that uh, provision on the mobile unit so that we would maintain the three where our students are um, and they would maintain the unit where their students are. Also, we realize this is, it's been set up for uh, action item every year for approval um, and that didn't happen this year. So rather than run in a situation where um, we have uh, potentially no agreement in place. Um, our thought was to make it so either side can terminate as of the end of a semester. Um, it may be easier for both boards to have an ongoing, or for all three boards, to have an ongoing agreement that can be terminated rather than one that requires it being back, brought back before the board each year. So our thought was to make that modification. Over the weekend, I did get um, thoughtful questions from Mr. Phillips and Mr. Walter about uh, both some changes. We do need to update some of the contact information and other kind of technical changes, and I'll make those suggestions from both of those um, and have that ready ready for your uh, review for next week. There were also some questions I didn't know the answer to that I think Vish, Vince Fishback, who's our director of the program, would know about some of the fee sharing. Um, and I understand he'll be able to get me that information. I can get that to you this week in terms of um, what fees are shared by uh, Canapolis. I know each of you had, had several questions on kind of the structure. There was an originally a grant, I think, from the Gates Foundation that um, paid for a lot of this. And I'm not sure how much we're getting from that or the time frame on that. And I'll, I can check on that and answer the other questions. I, and I can try to answer some tonight, but I did, I did get both of those emails this weekend and uh, we'll work with the, with the superintendent and with Vince to get you those uh, other more general questions about how the early college works. So. Okay, thank you, Mark. Um, Rob, did you want to uh, follow up on anything that, that Mark just said? And, and it sounds like we've got, um, a revised document. This is not the, those revisions are not in here because I hadn't had a chance to look. At they have not. I have not had okay. a chance to make, uh, to make those revisions okay. in this document. So, I did, and I welcome any other feedback. My thought was I'd take the, the two emails and the new contact information, um, which I had to update anyway, and any other comments from tonight, and then circulate a new, a new okay. revised okay. version. Okay. Mr. Watch, would you like so to we're still, Will we be talking about an amendment to the existing agreement? If, uh, we could do it as an amendment. I actually think what we had done each year is kind of have a new one-year agreement. So my thought is we will have a new agreement that, that will be continuing. So instead of, because there really is no existing agreement. The other, the agreement that was signed ended in June of 2013. So there's not really a current agreement. It, it did say it automatically. It renews upon a mutual agreement with the parties. Because I did look that up. It was, in, I guess, two years ago we had proved it. So that would still be in effect if we had a mutually agreed. Mutually agreed well, it on. could be extended for year to year with mutual agreement, but there was no vote from our board or their board to extend it. Or, after to, or to terminate for that. Or, and there was no vote to terminate. And, and the early college is continuing, continued last semester, is continuing this semester. So there's no, and I don't, for the viewing public, there's not a, I don't think there's any issue about the program continuing. It's just that we have not taken the formal step of reviewing, renewing the agreement that talks about how costs are going to be shared. So it's been a successful program and, and we intend to continue it. We just, and I think this is a step to making it so that the agreement automatically renews unless either side wants to terminate it or amend it. And this is, this issue with the modular units is one of the unit, the issues that came up that we wanted to, to clarify in this version. Okay. Well, as long as it has an effective date of that and you've got my other comments, so I don't have anything further. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Walter. Ms. Carpenter, do you want to comment on the agreement? Uh, no, I have no, uh, problem with the agreement one of the one thing I would like to get if I could get some data how many students do we currently have enrolled in that and what is our cost what is our breakdown cost per student with this program uh, if we could just get I mean that can just come to us in our report but I was just curious on how many we have now enrolled and again what our breakdown you know per student on that is if I could get that thank you Thank you, Ms. Carpenter. Mr. Shoemaker. I'm, I'm fine with the um, agreement as and whatever builds the others have. I don't really have a, a lot of problems with that. But I, I did want to know 
What is RSS? Typo. typo. <laughs> is that a typo? Okay. Okay, because that wasn't that wasn't. Um, yeah, that was one of the other comments, and I don't, I don't, th I think we'll either need to define that or take that term right. out. Yeah, it was an acronym uh, that you. wasn't defined. You're, you're, so. It was definitely undefined. No, I appreciate that. That's something I think Ms. either Mr. Walter, or Mr. Phillips also noted. No, thanks, Mr. Shee. Okay. okay, Mr. Harrison. I'm okay. Okay, Dr. Phillips. As Mark said, I I sent him um, my my comments. Most of them were just little nitpicks, like. Uh, acronyms and things like that, but the most substantial one was that in sections 3.1 and 3.2, it, it talks in several places, it says that the Cabarrus County Board of Education will pay Rowan Cabarrus Community mm -hmm. College for fees for all the early college students. And I, I, my feedback is that no, we should we will pay for all of the early college students coming from our enrollment area. Uh, we're not going to pay for the ones that come from Kannapolis. So I want to make sure that that is in whatever agreement is uh, we're asked to uh, approve. Thank you. Yes, you. But the the comments and questions that were raised by both Mr. Walter and Mr. Phillips were very detailed and very good and, and very astute. So I'm I'm uh, confident that Mark's revisions will, will will hit the mark. And Dr. Shepard wants to make a comment on the on the agreement. When the students enroll in the early college. They become students um, of the Cabarrus County Schools, even though they're students in Kannapolis, and we receive the funding, the state funding for those students. So um, I want to—I don't want the public to, or folks in Kannapolis to misunderstand that. We'll, we'll research to see, make sure they're paying their portion, but I, they are our students at that point. They have to relinquish their responsibility. Okay, well, if that's true, then I think that needs to be in the agreement. It needs to be stipulated in, in writing that that's part of the agreement, because otherwise um, they could come back in a couple of years and say, oh, hey, you guys said you were going to pay for all of it. Okay, good point. And uh, we'll put that on the action agenda since we'll get a revised document this week and maybe a little other data that we can look at. So we'll have that on the action agenda. Okay, with that, board members, uh, that uh, concludes our, our meeting, and I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Yes, I, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>